This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I feel like Tudor is one of the few brands that we kinda have been able to watch grow throughout the years. Like when they were first introduced, they just were clearly a spitting image of their father. Rolex, they use the same cases, different movements, but everything was literally branded Rolex. And then Tudor was like, no, I wanna go out and have my own identity. And they went through this awkward stage where their watches were not looking that great. And then obviously with the introduction of the Black Bay, Tudor kind of looked back at its roots and was like, I'm a full grown adult now. I need to like, I need to present myself to the world. And they did that with the Black Bay and the Black Bay 36 and the Black Bay 58 and the Black Bay 34 and the Black Bay 31 and the Black Bay GMT and the Black Bay Chrono. And now I feel like Tudor as an adult looked at itself and was like, wow, I got to not only am I an adult, but I have to take care of myself. I have to start running and getting in better shape. And that's exactly what they did this year. What is up, watch fam? My name is Michael. Usually Christian is right here, but he's not here right now because he is in Geneva. He is at Watches and Wonders looking at watches by the looks of his Instagram story, drinking something, and uh, he's having a generally great time. I'm back at base camp, keeping everything locked down, keeping the fort secure, but we're looking at the Tudor releases today because I've had gripes, and Christian's featured in here a little bit, we talked about Tudor together briefly, but I have had gripes with Tudor watches for a long time. I also think Tudor makes some of the best value watches of all times. And sadly, I think they made one of the most beautiful watches of modern time and they didn't discontinue it, but they changed it until it doesn't really look like that anymore. It's still a beautiful watch, but a bunch of things changed. They introduced a watch, they introduced bracelets and Tudor is becoming more of its own, but also more Rolex than ever. And I think it's only for the better, except for the one bad part. Anyways, definitely be sure to subscribe if you haven't. This is Watches and Wonders season. Christian and I decided we were gonna go all out for Watches and Wonders this year and then built no infrastructure around that. So it's really just me here trying to pump out as many videos as I can. So we're not gonna pump out that many, but we'll be back to regularly scheduled programming soon. But without further ado, let's start at, no, we'll save that one for last. Let's start at the more boring things, then we'll talk about the cooler things after. Two boring things, they're not actually that boring. My least favorite and the thing that, to be honest, I really don't care about too much is that Tudor changed the dial on their Black Bay GMT. The Black Bay GMT, to me, well, it didn't take anything from all these other watches. It didn't go to the gym yet. That's why I really, I don't like this watch. I love the watch, I think it's beautiful. There's just some things that annoy me. I don't like, and this will be very important when we talk about the other watches, I don't like the fact that the case just has a like, straight down side. There's no subtle curve or anything like that that you see on a Rolex. It looks very like you just cut a chunk out and didn't refine it at all. It's also an incredibly thick watch. Tudor watches have been very thick for a very long time. Some of them, not all of them. Two things that have just turned me off from the Black Bay line for a very long time, the Black Bay line, not the Black Bay 58. It's kind of tough to differentiate that, but these original kind of Tudor watches that came out, like the rebirth of Tudor, have always been too thick, but this opaline dial is cool. We won't go into too much detail about it because Christian and I want to talk about it together when we do a bigger Watches and Wonders video. But this is a nod to the famed albino Rolex GMT that's you know very rare watch and everything like that. Tudor is the brand, I guess, that would pay homage to it while also partly being part of it. But yeah, opaline dial, meaning that it is not pure white, it is off-white. Very cool, kind of also referencing the fact that white dialed Rolexes did turn cream in the sun after a while. But very, very cool. I'm very excited about the next iteration of the Tudor Black Bay GMT because if they're taking what they're putting in the Black Bay now and planning on putting that in the GMT, that is an amazing watch. I truly, that it gets to the point almost where I'm like, if I can get one of these and they're this much cheaper, I don't, I of course want a Rolex, but it doesn't hurt me like it does now. Right now, the thickness and the stiffness, like the big block of this GMT makes it not the best. Especially because I kind of think they're gonna release a Jubilee very soon. The 
watch on your wrist, unlike your iPad, will mean something to someone one day if it doesn't already. Something that will make them smile, walk a little taller, surely at some point cry, but it will mean something. Next up, a big update, but also not a big update. It's not a new watch, but Tudor basically fixed every gripe I had with the original Black Bay form factor. I think it went from 15 millimeters to 13.7, which is a crazy difference in thickness. That I, it's a tiny bit thicker than a Speedmaster, and 15 millimeters is a tank. So this is the Black Bay just with a burgundy bezel. Burgundy bezel is beautiful, but also you'll see the outer edge of the bezel is a lot more grippy, has a lot more steel look to it. The crown tube is virtually gone, so the crown is right against the watch case. Obviously, it looks like the Rolex Big Crown, but is actually based off of the Tudor Big Crown 7924. The removal of the crown tube, I know that was kind of Tudor's differentiating factor, like, oh no, look, it has a crown tube, and now it doesn't. I like it without the crown tube, but not on all the watches. That is what we'll talk about later, but either way, Fantastic watch and the Jubilee bracelet coming in on top of that. Huge update, same watch, but it's dramatically better. And I am regurgitating this from Bark and Jack. I haven't seen it in pictures or read about it in articles yet, but the sides of the watch are no longer like a flat block, like a flat big block. They are curved a little bit. So this is, this is more of a Submariner contender than it's ever been. Obviously, Tudor has kind of taken that role of the affordable tool watch, affordable tool watch, but now I feel like all those missing factors on the Black Bay that didn't make it as aesthetically refined as the Submariner are slowly going away. They're not all gone yet. It's not as refined, obviously. There'll always be a difference, but it does seem like it's really creeping up on that level of like, oh, it meets everything that I wanted. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you are looking for a website or domain, look no further than Squarespace. Even if you have no idea how to code a website, you still need one and you need to have a pretty one because it's 2023, people can't have those basic HTML looking websites. So the solution is really Squarespace. They have tons of beautiful themes that you can install at the click of a button. And even honestly, I suggest if you already have a website that's not on Squarespace, shifting over to Squarespace because it's going to make updating, editing, and changing the entire style of your website way, way easier than if you had to hire someone to actually recode the entire thing. Or add plugins, especially if you're using Squarespace for a commerce website. Speaking of, that is literally the reason why I am here today. Theoandharris.com is powered by Squarespace, which powers my paycheck. So thank you to Squarespace for making this possible. A website is not really an optional thing anymore in 2023, because not only can it be a digital storefront if you don't wanna actually get a physical location for your store, it's also a digital business card. We work with someone named Malcolm who edits a lot of our films, who's actually in a live coming up. And Malcolm actually got in contact through us because he signed up for Squarespace using our link, put his reel on it, made the website look beautiful, sent it over to Christian, who then sent it to me, who said, this guy is really good at what he does. And then we hired Malcolm. So Squarespace is a very, very important tool in your life. Whether it is your business or your portfolio or your reel or just a digital resume, Squarespace is essential. So if you are on the lookout for a website or domain, Squarespace is the place to go. And you can use our code Theo Harris to save 10% off your first order. Thanks Squarespace. Next up, this, this may be the tutor that I get. I don't have a tutor. I really, really want a tutor. And there's one that I'll talk about later that I'm not even gonna get the new one. I'd probably get the old one if I was gonna get it. But the new release from Tudor, the Black Bay 54. As Hodinkee says, there was originally the 41, then the 39, now the 37, which keeps it keeps confusing me because the Black Bay 54 makes it sound like it'd be a different size. But anyways, wow, this is a direct reference to the Tudor 7922. 
And I obviously haven't seen one of these in the metal, but I truly, from the looks of it, it just looks like they knocked it out of the park, especially for someone like me who has a small wrist. I'm not gonna be rocking the 41, even though I love the Jubilee bracelet and I love that it's thinner. The 58, I could rock, it's a 39, but it is a little big, not too big, it fits my wrist fine. But the 37, coming in at 11.24 millimeters, is crazy. And now we get into the territory where, again, Christian would freak out if he was sitting to my side, but he's not here right now. Papa is in Geneva, sleeping. And now it gets to the point where you put the original Black Bay, or the 41 millimeter Black Bay, and you compare it to the Submariner. You can also do that with the Black Bay 58, 39 to 40. I'm talking really case size and look. But now, with the Black Bay 54, you have a 37 millimeter watch that looks almost exactly like early Submariners. With new technology, it's a chronometer, it's more heritage-based. I've been wanting a heritage-based Submariner for a very long time. It comes on rubber strap or metal, and it still has 200 meters water resistance at a 37 millimeter case size. All of a sudden, you're comparing two different watches, should I get the Submariner or the 54? But all of a sudden, there's a lot more to consider because I would love a Submariner, but I would love a 37 millimeter diver more, I think which to me is very interesting. And also, Tudor did a very interesting thing at Watches and Wonders, where they opened up a temporary boutique at Watches and Wonders, where you could buy a watch the same day it was released. These are immediately available. I think that's brilliant. I want to see one of these watches so bad. I haven't watched all of the other YouTubers' videos, like hands-on with them yet, but I'm going to binge those, and then I might make Christian buy one because he's there, he never will. Even if I beg him to, he just won't do it, but I will try my best if I decide on that. Very exciting stuff. Okay, finally, my favorite watch from Tudor for a very long time, now rivaled by the Black Bay 54, has been the Black Bay 36. I think that watch is incredible. I love that it has 150 meters water resistance. I think it's obviously an alternative to the Explorer, but to the point where I wouldn't get the Black Bay 36 because I couldn't afford an Explorer. I actually have an Explorer on right now. But I would choose between the two based off aesthetic differences. Especially, I wanna say especially now because now it's, it has an updated in-house chronometer movement of the inside, but they took away a few things that really made me like the Black Bay 36. I've always viewed this watch as Tudor's best model in their Black Bay line. It was always the watch that if I was looking to buy a Tudor, this was in the running. But now, it looks like Tudor is really pushing this kind of over to the women's market more and less to the men's market. They're not exactly because it still obviously goes 31, 36, 39, 41, and it comes in new dial colors. There's a, a whole lot of things to be very happy about with this watch. But with the removal of the oyster bracelet and the crown tube, and I think that's it, I can't really, obviously I can't hold the watch and look around. With the removal of those things, to me it takes, well especially the text at the bottom, the smiley face was awesome. It makes this watch look a lot less brutal, a lot less intense, it's kind of more refined, which I just complimented Tudor for on all their other models, but the Black Bay 36 has always been a watch where I was like, don't touch that one, I think that one's perfect. So it got modified, it got changed, new Jubilee, new movement, less crown tube, Still a beautiful watch. I Again, I have to see it in the metal, I have to see videos of it, but I wish they kept with the old one because the old one was fantastic. That is all the new stuff we have from Tudor. Obviously, I'm ignoring the Meta certified movements, which is also insane that Tudor is moving over to that, but we'll talk about that later when Christian comes home. A lot of other things to go over, just, you know, want to chat while he's not here. So I will see you all very soon.